I was on this really long tour around the world, and I had uh, written this piece of music that I was really excited about because it, it didn't sound like any other piece of music I'd ever written before. And that's always exciting as a songwriter to come up with something you think is fresh. So I really wanted the lyrics to be, you know, unique. And uh, I knew it didn't sound like a love song, and it, didn't sa it certainly wasn't a, an up-tempo rock song. And I've, ever since I was a little boy, I've been a huge fan of mystery novels, you know, and murder mysteries and stuff. So I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and write a story song, you know, with a plot and characters. And uh, an idea came to me, and I started to work on it. And the more I worked on it, the more I knew that it sucked. <laughs> I thought it was the dumbest thing I'd ever tried to write. But I, you know, we songwriters, we, um, we're sort of idea pack rats. You know, we don't really throw anything away because there might be some little sliver of it that might be good for something later. So um, I, I was home, I had a little break from the tour, and I went up to my music room, and I got out my cassette deck. 1991, folks. And uh, I thought, I'll just sing this stupid song down one time and throw it in a drawer and forget about it. So I'm in the middle of playing it, and my wife, Cynthia, comes to get me for dinner. And she opens the door, and, and she sees that I'm recording something, so she kind of just hangs there for a second. And I finish the song, and I stop it, and she goes, Whoa, what is that song? And I said, Oh, this, it's this stupid song idea I had. I'm not going to do anything with it. It's this song about a little town in Nebraska. And, uh, and there's this river that runs through the town. And, and there's a girl that lives in the town named Mary. And one day Mary disappears. She just vanishes. And no one knows what happened to her. And I'm the narrator of the song. But I'm also sort of this weird guy that lives in the town. And maybe, maybe I had something to do with her disappearance. Or it's, it's like, this is like the worst Twin Peaks episode ever. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do anything with it or record it, anything. And my wife said, babe, that is a huge hit song. And I said, babe, no, it's not. <laughs> now, okay, this is an important part of the story because you guys here and you guys out in television land you husbands and boyfriends, you know what I'm talking about. All we want, once in a while, is to be freaking right. Because <laughs> we're never right. And so in this moment, I thought, I've got her. This is what I do for a living. I know what I'm talking about, and so I'm, I'm actually admitting to you guys now that the only reason I recorded this song at all was to prove her wrong. <laughs> Knowing that no one would pay attention to this stupid song. And about five months later, this song was number one in 13 countries. <laughs> and we'll do this song for you, it's called Hazard. Dude, it's nice. That boy's not right. 